Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm getting ready for the day using a full face of Chanel. Since the new eye campaign is launching any moment, I wanted to quickly give this Le Beige Tender Palette some love since I've only used it one other time on camera. So the last time I got ready using Intense, today I'm using the Tender Palette. It came together to create this very pretty, more natural, kind of soft, everyday makeup look. And I pulled out some of my other favorite Chanel products. So if you would like to hear my thoughts and see how I created today's makeup look, just keep watching. We have a very dark and gloomy week in Miami, but I wanted to begin with some sun protection. So I'm priming my skin with the Chanel CC cream. It has SPF 50, which is nice underneath makeup. It also helps to color correct, boost hydration. It has vitamin C, a ton of really yummy stuff for the skin. This is always one of my favorite Chanel products. And I use the shade B30. I'm still going in with foundation. I'm just using this as a primer today. So I squeezed out about a pea size amount and I'm going to begin by applying this to the center points of the face and blending out. I like how it just evens out your complexion. That way you don't need as much foundation. And the fact that it has SPF 50. Now, of course, if you're going to get the full SPF 50, you would have to use a lot more than I'm using today but it's still nice to have a little sun protection. The key with the CC cream is to make sure you don't use too much product. Now, if you're using it in lieu of foundation, you might wanna build it up a little bit more, but you could still apply a thin layer all over the face and then just stipple in the places that you do want a little bit more coverage. For example, right here, I have a little clogged pore, a little red dot right here on the chin. But as long as you go in with a thin layer, you blend it out all over, and you prep your skin with moisturizer and skincare beforehand, I think it looks so beautiful and very perfect into the skin. And you get all of those great skincare benefits. For foundation, today I pulled out my Ultra Latent Velvet. I recently restocked this, it's only been a couple of weeks, so it's been a really long time since I've used this on camera. I have to give it a nice shake. And because we already helped to even out the complexion with the CC cream, I don't need to use very much product at all. So I'm going in with another pea size amount. Kind of a baby pea. It's a pretty thin liquid. You can always build it up if you want a little bit more. And same thing, I'm starting in the center points of the face, kind of stippling in the areas where I know I want a little bit more coverage. And then I'm letting the CC cream cover the rest. This used to be my favorite foundation whenever I started at the Chanel counter a long time ago. And they did reformulate several years ago, but I think that's even better than it was before. They extended the shade range. I think they tweaked a couple ingredients, but it's basically the same. It's very thin, medium buildable coverage, and a matte finish. Anytime you see velvet when it comes to Chanel, that means matte. But it's not too matte. I think it's more of a natural finish. I made sure to blend a little bit of the foundation down my neck because the Ultra Latent Velvet does oxidize a bit darker than the other foundations. You notice it right away, but just to be safe, I took a little bit down the neck. Highly recommend doing that. And now I'm going in with my Rose Color Corrector from Chanel. I use this instead of concealer. I just haven't had a chance to restock my 10 but I think the rose is a little bit prettier because it has a very slight rose undertone which helps to brighten the under eye area. And it's a bit lighter and brighter than the 10, so I actually prefer it. It's so hard to believe that we're already halfway through June and pretty soon this Le Beige Summer Collection is going to be forgotten. So I need to make sure to use up these products and really appreciate them and enjoy them while they're still somewhat fresh on the brain. Oh, looks so pretty. I've been using my Pat McGrath Labs concealer and I love it, but it is so heavy. I sometimes forget just how heavy it is. It's kind of nice to go back to the Chanel, which is a bit lighter. I think this is more of a medium coverage. It's definitely not full, but it also has a really pretty natural finish. 
There are other palettes that I purchased recently that I already feel like I've forgotten about. I never see people talking about them anymore, like the Zendo palette from Natasha Denona. It's been weeks since I've touched it. And it's still a relatively new purchase. I'm trying to get away from that, but I am going to pick up the new eye campaign from Chanel. If it's Chanel, I can't resist. I'm very impressed with the new Louboutin eyeshadows, I'll tell you that. That palette I've been getting a ton of use out of lately. That and the new Pat McGrath Labs eyeshadow quad, which is it called? Voyeuristic Vixen. Those have probably been my two favorite recent eyeshadow purchases. That and I really love both the Tender and Intense palettes from Chanel. Done. Now here's one of my forgotten Chanel products. I don't know the last time I pulled this out of the drawer. It was shoved in the very back, but I was able to find it. It's the Chanel Loose Powder, and I love this powder. There's nothing wrong with it, but I get in my own head and I just wanna finish products one at a time. I don't like going in between products because then I feel like I'll never finish anything and my collection will just keep growing until it's completely out of hand. So I've been using other products just to get rid of them and I've been saving this, but not today. I pulled it out, so we're gonna use this loose powder. I just got a text message from my associate at the boutique, Gio, and he says that they don't have an exact date yet, but it's looking like the last week of June for the eye campaign. So as soon as that launches, I will let you guys know. I'm really only going in with a teeny tiny bit of powder gonna do the under eyes to set the concealer and a little bit in my t-zone because I do tend to get a bit shiny and oily throughout the day the foundation is a velvet it's a matte finish but this is Florida and it is hot and humid <laughs> so need that extra shine protection since I just powdered the face, there's no going in with the Le Beige Bronzing Cream. If I tried to layer a cream on top of what we have, it would just be a disaster. So instead, I'm going to bronze using the Le Beige Healthy Glow Illuminating Powder in the shade Sunset. And I believe this is still available on the Chanel website. It's the deeper of the two shades, and it has a very slight luminous finish. So if it's not available, you can always go in with the Luminous Le Beige Powder, and it's basically the same. I love this bronzer. It's definitely one of my favorites from my collection because it blends so easily. These powders are ultra sheer, so they never go on too intense. Kind of always soft and light, and then you can build them up slowly. But with bronzer, I think that's better. Really can't mess it up. I always like to go back really quickly with my powder brush and just make sure that the bronzer is nice and blended. It also kind of softens it up a bit. No additional product on my brush, just using it to blend. To go with the Tender Eyeshadow Palette, I pulled out my Rose Bronze Blush from Chanel. This is such a classic shade. I think it, it's pretty universal. It goes with really everything, but I thought this would complement the eyeshadow palette really nicely. It's not really bronze. It's more rose than bronze, but it's a bit neutral. It has a very, very slight sheen to it. It's so nice. Face is almost done. I am gonna go in with highlighter. 
So I pulled out my Pearls de Lumiere from the spring collection. So pretty. It almost looks wet on the skin. This is one of my favorite products from the year. It has a very light kind of champagne gold undertone. In the pan, it looks so light, but it's actually a bit deeper. The reason why I love it so much is that it looks like skin. Your natural skin is just a little bit wet, dewy. <laughs> I always like to highlight the center points of the face above the brows as well. But then same thing I do with bronzer. I like to go back with my powder brush and just soften it up a bit. Not on the cheeks. I don't mind if this has a little bit of a bling moment but I don't want my nose, my forehead, and my chin to be quite so shiny. <laughs> so I like to go back with my brush and just diffuse it a little bit. To really bump our glow up a notch, I also pulled out my Rose Bum Essential Stick. So I am just going to tap a little bit of this right on top of the cheeks. On top of the highlight we already have because this is more of that glass skin sort of wet look but it doesn't really have shimmer or sheen to it. The rose undertone is meant to be really light, so this is just going to help take it up a notch. And it stays kind of balmy on the skin. It doesn't really dry down, but it's not sticky. Really pretty. Face is now done, so we're moving on to eyes, and I pulled out the Tender Eyeshadow Palette and this Refer 16 brush. And I'm going to go into this bottom mauve shade right here. And I'm going to lightly blend that in the crease. I've only used this palette once on camera and that was during my initial review, but I've actually used it quite a bit off camera. I love both of the Le Beige palettes that launched this year. I really liked my warm palette from last year. They're so much better than they were originally. Like, look at that. They have great color payoff. They're easy to blend. It's more of a light, silky, powdery texture. They don't feel really creamy. They're not really intense and sparkly, but it's meant to be more of a soft, light makeup summer look. Now I've picked up an old Chanel concealer brush, but it's basically just a flat shader, synthetic brush. And I'm going into this shade right here. It's kind of a pinky pewter metallic. It's really nice. So this is going all over the lid. Same brush. I'm going into this shimmery shade right here down at the bottom. And I'm going to pop a little bit of that right on the center of the lid. It's subtle sparkle, of course, because it's Chanel. It's not going to give you a Pat McGrath Labs shimmer wham in your face, but it's nice. It just adds a little something extra. With a pencil brush, I'm going back into that first mauve and I'm going to buff this beneath the lower lash line. Next, I picked up a Refer 13 brush and I'm going into the darkest shade in the palette and I am going to build that up in the outer V. And then very quickly, I'm going to go back with my original brush and I'm just going to make sure the crease is blended. I really didn't build it up too much. You probably could make it a bit darker, but I don't want to. It's a daytime look. Instead of my typical eyeliner routine, I pulled out my Stilo Ombre A Contour Stick in the shade Burgundy Perle. I'm not going to take it all the way in. I'm really starting on the outer half kind of the outer two-thirds of the eye. 
very lightly, I'm just tracing this over the top lash line. I'm also going to use this to line the inner rim. It's pretty soft, so you don't need a brush. You can kind of smudge it out with your fingers, but I'm just softening it up a bit. It's not meant to be really precise and harsh. So I'm going in with the Shantakai Longest Lash. This is the formula that contains peptides. Not only does it have peptides, which will help strengthen your lashes, help promote growth, it just looks really pretty. It helps make them look nice and feathery. I really love this mascara. It's funny seeing the eyes without a wing. Even when I don't do liquid eyeliner, if I'm using a pencil, I still like to do a little wing, but I have no wing going on. And I'm going to fill my eyebrows in on camera this time around. So I've pulled out my Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. This is what I like to use to fill them in and then I will set them. I know I've showed this before, you probably already know this, but just in case, you want your brow to start from the center of your nostril. You're going to angle up through the inner corner of the eye and that is where the brow should start. So you can make a little point if you want to. We always start at the center of the nostril, not the outside of the nostril, because we have different noses. Our nostrils might not be even on either side. So you want to start from the center and you're going to go through the iris. And that is where it should arch. You want to make a little point there? You can. And then again, starting from the center of the nostril, and we're going to angle to the corner of the eye. And that should be the tail of the brow. Now, brows always go through their own trends. I really like to do the fluff brows, so I kind of brush them up and I make them nice and fluffy instead of really defined. I know now it's very popular to make the eyebrows lifted and to not have the tail angle down, but angle either directly to the side or just up a little bit. Maybe move this up a little bit and actually have the tail of the brow end a little bit higher. I start in the very front and I just create little hair-like strokes. See, I have to take my eyebrows in a little bit because they naturally start a little bit further back. Another tip is to not make your little hair-like strokes too long. So you, there are a couple angles you wanna pay attention to. Of course, you can mark the three little angles, but you also want to pay attention to this angle and this angle below the brow and above the brow. When I hold my pencil here, and I follow the natural angle of the brow. When I go down towards the nose, the angle will get a little bit lower. So I don't want these little hairs to get too high because then it just throws off the entire brow. The shape looks so much better if these hairs are nice and short in the front, and then it gradually gets a little bit higher until we reach the arch, and then it comes down to the tail. Same thing with the bottom of the brow. So this is the bulk of the brow, this chunk right here, wherever you have the biggest chunk naturally, that should be your guide. I know it can be kind of difficult, especially if you have sparse brows, which my brows have a little bit of the microblading still left. So it can be kind of hard to see where the natural hair is, but this right here is the bottom of my natural brow. So I just want to follow that angle down and then up towards the tail. And I'm naturally pretty blank right here. So I can see this is only shaded from the microblading. So this I like to fill in. That way they're a little bit thicker. It's going to vary depending on your personal brows. 
I started with the little pencil set. They have the stencils from Anastasia. Those are a really great guide. For a beginner, I think it is definitely worth investing in the stencils. I think it's maybe $20, but I would try to go visit an Anastasia brow bar or maybe a Benefit brow bar, whatever is close to you, and let them show you which stencil you should be using. The more you use the stencil, you build up the muscle memory and then it becomes a lot easier to freehand. I always like to do the front of the brow first and when I think that looks really nice I'll go ahead and blend it up just brush up all of the hairs see what it will look like when the hairs are stuck straight up and fill in any blanks And then I move back to the second half, kind of the middle of the brow whenever I hit the arch. And then I'll finish with the tail. And again, I'm filling in a little bit below my brow so that I have kind of a continual with I actually need to add a little lift to my arch right here. I kind of extend it out a little bit right on top. Perfect. I like that shape. Now we'll move on to the second brow, but you see, not filled in, filled in. What a difference. And I use shade four of this pencil. In my experience, this is the best pencil for creating the little hair-like strokes. Because it's nice and thin at the point, but it's not too waxy, so you don't have to go over the same spot over and over again. I always try to be light-handed in the front. They're very rarely going to be perfect. When I take a lot of time, I can make them look as perfect as it gets. Most of us don't have that kind of time to dedicate to just brows every single day, so do the best you can, but don't get hung up on it if it looks a little bit off chances are nobody else is going to notice. You will notice. Nobody else will notice. I think this one is my favorite brow. The shape always looks so much better on this side than this side. This one always looks a little rounded for some reason. I do my best to make them even, but my best isn't good enough some days. Normally I set the hairs in place using the Anastasia Brow Freeze, which I love, but today I'm going to use my 24 hour brow setter from Benefit. I also really like this brow gel and I thought the brow freeze was better and then I started using this again and I think both of them are really good. It's just a different texture. The brow freeze is very waxy and it stays kind of soft, whereas this will make your brows a bit crunchy. It really does hold them in place. Both of the products do. We're just about done with the eyes. I'm going back in the palette with a little pencil brush and I'm picking up this light shade up here and I'm gonna use that as a brow highlight. The last step is lips and I'm going in with the La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue in the shade Endless Pink. It's this really pretty, very wearable everyday pink shade. And I am not going to use a lip liner today. For the longest time, I never used a lip liner. And then I guess I started purchasing a bunch of lip liners and then I started using them all the time. And I've been overlining my lips, kind of experimenting. And I don't think I really like it very much. So I'm going back to more natural lip. The 
once it starts to dry down and get a little bit tacky, I apply the gloss. My makeup for the day is now complete and this is the finished look. And overall, I am so happy with the way it turned out. I think the eyes look really nice. It's a softer look. I don't even know if I would call this soft glam. I think it is more of an everyday makeup style, which is perfect for these Le Beige eyeshadow palettes. I think the colors look very flattering. The complexion turned out really nice with the blush and the CC cream and the foundation. Everything came together so perfectly. Since I didn't go in with a typical eyeliner, it really enhances the lashes as well. They look longer and fluffier and more of a focal point of the look. So I think the lashes and the eyes turned out really nice. I love this lip. I haven't worn this in a really long time. I've been kind of stuck in a timeless beige rut. I don't want to call it a rut because I love that shade, but I am slowly but surely getting through that. So I'll probably replace it with this and just throw this in my purse whenever I finish timeless beige. It's pink, but it's not too pink. I think it is a very wearable everyday shade. And this would be a perfect everyday kind of go-to makeup look in my opinion. So that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked seeing the entire look come together. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.